Now it's time to look at the bottom right section of the software, which is where all the advanced V bus settings are located. This is the section that you will most often use when working in VE config. Here there are several tabs that organize the settings into categories, including general, grid, inverter, charger, virtual switch, assistance, and advanced. Let's take a closer look at the individual settings within each of these tabs, starting with general. The general tab is where you can adjust general incoming AC settings, such as system frequency, shore limits, dynamic and current limiter, together with the battery monitoring features. System frequency. Here you can select the frequency of the system using one of two options, being 50 or 60 Hz. Note that the setting also determines the acceptable frequency range for the transfer switch if the accept wide input frequency range is disabled in the grid settings tab. System frequency refers to the rate at which the current changes direction per second. The standard frequency of the electric current varies by country and is either 50 or 60 Hz. A 50 Hz frequency is used in much of the world, including Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia, while a 60 Hz frequency is commonly used in North America, parts of South America, a few countries in Asia like the Philippines, and parts of Japan. It's crucial to match the system frequency setting on your Victron device to that of the local electrical grid to which the device is connected. Mismatches in frequency can lead to improper operation of the device and can cause damage to both the device and the appliances connected to it. Motors, transformers, and other inductive loads are particularly sensitive to frequency changes. Operating these at an incorrect frequency can lead to overheating and reduced efficiency. Most modern electronic devices are designed to handle both frequencies, but when it comes to integrating with a power grid or generator, matching the frequency is essential. The AC1 input current limit allows you to specify the maximum current that the device can draw from the first AC input source, adjustable in amperes. This setting is also a critical parameter for the operation of the power control and power assist features on Victron inverter chargers. The power control feature will try to prevent too high of an AC input current by decreasing the charge current when the input current is higher than the AC input current limit value. Let's look at an example to better understand the power control feature using a Victron 3000 VA inverter charger with a maximum output capacity of 2400 watts. During the installation, the installer sets the AC input current limit to 10.4 amps, which on a 230 volt grid works out to be 2392 watts, therefore just under the maximum 2400 watt load capacity of the inverter. So for the sake of simplicity, I will refer to the watts as a result of the 10.4 amp limit as 2400 watts, even though they are actually different. This is due to the fact that the power control feature is activated when the AC input exceeds the 10.4 amp limit and not the 2400 watt max capacity of the inverter. With that said, let's continue. This device is tasked with both powering a small house and charging a battery. The homeowner gets an early start to their day by doing some work on their desktop computer using 450 watts of power. Simultaneously, the inverter is recharging the battery from the evening's usage at a rate of 20 amps, with the battery operating at 54.5 volts, resulting in an additional 1,090 watt consumption. Combining this with their house loads of 450 watts comes to a total load of 1,540 watts. However, they decide to make a cup of coffee to wake them up, turning the kettle on to boil some water. The kettle's 1,800 watts get added onto the existing 450 watt house load, coming to a new house load total of 2,250 watts. This, together with the 1,090 watt charging load, results in a new total load of 3,340 watts at a current of 14.5 amps. This far exceeds the maximum 2,400 watt sustainable load of the Victrum inverter, as well as the 10.4 amps set as the AC input current limit. As the AC input is now more than the AC input current limit, the inverter manages this by using the power control feature to reduce the battery charging current, making the loads the priority. The new permissible power for charging is 150 watts which is the remaining capacity after accounting for the household loads of 450 watts, together with the kettle's 1,800 watt load. To reach 150 watts, 
the charging current is adjusted down to approximately 2.75 amps, which is calculated by dividing 150 watts by the 54.5 battery voltage. This reduced charging load now ensures that the total power usage does not exceed the inverter's capacity, as well as reducing the total load to be equal to or less than the 10.4 amps set as the AC input current limit. Once the kettle finishes boiling, its 1,800 watt load will drop away, allowing the charge current to go back to its 20 amp limit, thereby again stabilizing the total load to 1,540 watts. The Power Assist feature extends the power control functionality by supplementing limited AC supply with battery power. If the load exceeds the set AC input current limit, the inverter charger will automatically add battery power to meet the demand without exceeding the AC source's limits. When overruled by remote is checked, it indicates that the setting can be overridden by an external control, such as a remote panel connected to the device or via the Serbo GX interface. This can be found by going into your inverter's menu, then changing the input current limit using the plus and minus buttons. Once done, press the checkmark button to confirm the changes. The AC2 input current limit allows you to specify the maximum current that the device can draw from the second AC input source, adjustable in amperes. Note that the AC2 input is only available on devices equipped with dual AC inputs, such as the Victrum Quattro inverter chargers. This distinction is important for systems where two separate AC sources are used, such as two different grid connections or one grid and one generator. In a typical setup, the grid will be connected to AC1 and the generator to AC2. With power assist enabled, there is a minimum value for the AC input current limit. This minimum value is essential to maintain the balance between the load, the inverter charger's capacity, and the battery's ability to contribute power without being overly discharged. Similar to AC1, the overruled by remote checkbox allows the AC2 input current limit to be overridden by an external control. The dynamic current limiter is a feature that intelligently manages the AC input current going to Victron V bus devices, such as the Quattro inverter chargers, which are commonly connected to a generator or other power sources that cannot handle certain high loads. When the dynamic current limiter is enabled, the effective AC input current limit is not a fixed value. Instead, it adapts based on the recent load history. Here's how it works. If the load on the generator or other AC source has been low, the dynamic limiter will set an effective AC input current limit that is slightly above the actual load. This helps in avoiding a sudden demand on the generator which it might not be able to fulfill instantly. When the load increases, the effective limit also ramps up, but with a deliberate delay. This allows the generator to cope with the increasing demand gradually, preventing a voltage drop that could trigger a switch to inverter mode. Let me explain this using an example. Suppose you have a 2000 VA generator with the AC input current limit set to 8 amps, as well as enabling the power assist feature. Initially, there's no load and the batteries are fully charged, so the generator is not supplying any current. However, if a 7 amp load is suddenly connected, a generator without dynamic limiting would experience a voltage drop due to its inability to provide instant power. If this voltage drop from the output of the generator drops below the AC load disconnect limit, the Quattro will switch to inverter function as the back feed relay opens, disconnecting the generator from the load. It will then use power from the batteries to supply the required load. But if we were to enable the dynamic current limiter, Connecting a 7 amp load will instead trigger the power assist feature. The generator will begin to supply the load with the effective AC input current limit gradually increasing to the set limit of 8 amps, during which the inverter will assist to prevent any voltage drop. Once the limit is reached and the generator can handle the load, the inverter stops assisting. And with power control, it prevents unnecessary switching to inverter mode by reducing the charge current when the AC input current exceeds the dynamic limit. In summary, by implementing the dynamic current limiter can lead to a more stable power supply, especially with generators, by preventing sudden loads that exceed the generator's instant capacity. It helps to ensure a seamless transition between different power sources and conditions, enhancing the overall reliability of the power system. However, if you are not connecting a generator into the system, it's advisable to not enable it.
The external current sensor connected setting corresponds to the use of an external current transformer, such as the one designed for the Multi Plus 2 inverter charger. This transformer is designed to assist with the implementation of power control and power assist when using the Multi Plus 2, while optimizing self consumption by allowing external current sensing. When checked, the Enable Battery Monitor activates the Internal Battery Management System, or BMS, of a Victron V bus device, such as a Multi Plus or Quattro inverter charger. When enabled, it allows the system to keep track of various battery parameters, such as the state of charge, which includes the bulk, absorption and float modes, the battery capacity, measured in amp hours, the charge efficiency, as well as the current state of charge, or SOC, as a percentage. This internal BMS serves as a default monitoring system when there isn't an external third-party battery management system integrated into the battery setup. In saying this, it's critical to enable this feature regardless if you have a third-party BMS in your system already, as it provides a fallback mechanism for monitoring and protecting the battery in case the external battery monitor fails. By setting this up to match your battery specs, it helps prevent incorrect charging rates that could harm the battery and your system. However, if there is an external battery management, it should take priority over this built-in fallback. Using a GX device such as the Serbo, you can configure which management system has priority within the Venus OS settings. This can be done by going to the Serbo's device list using the remote console interface. From here, go into the settings menu followed by the system setup menu. Once there, you can click on the battery monitor option to select which BMS you want to take priority. Note that you have to have the enable battery monitor option enabled in VE configure in order to see your V-Bus charger model as an option here. However, as mentioned before, you should be using your battery's built-in BMS as priority as it will provide more accurate readings and results. This extra BMS is simply a failsafe, providing an extra layer of protection and efficiency for the battery system. The state of charge when bulk finished setting is used to specify at what state of charge or SOC percentage the bulk phase must finish. During the bulk phase, the battery is charged at the maximum current until it reaches a predetermined voltage. Setting the state of charge at the end of this phase helps to calibrate the system, preventing the SOC value from drifting due to measurement errors during successive charge and discharge cycles. It's a form of calibration to ensure the ongoing accuracy of the battery monitor as small errors can accumulate over time and lead to incorrect SOC readings, which can affect the performance and longevity of the battery system. For lithium iron phosphate batteries, the state of charge when bulk finished setting should typically reflect the point at which the battery is nearly fully charged, but not to the point of being overcharged. Iron phosphate batteries generally have a flat voltage curve and can be considered nearly full at around 90 to 95% state of charge so setting this to 95% is accurate when using these batteries. Battery capacity is simply the total capacity of the battery or battery bank connected to the system, adjustable in ampere hours. For example, if you have two 100 ampere hour batteries, then this setting should be set to 200. This setting is critical because it allows the monitor to accurately calculate the state of charge of the connected battery bank. When enabling the battery monitor, a pop-up window will appear asking you to set the battery capacity and will not enable until one is set. Once done, you can then change it as you need. As just mentioned, this should be set to reflect the total ampere hours of your battery setup. For iron phosphate batteries, this would be the nominal capacity as specified by the manufacturer. It's important to input the correct capacity to ensure the SOC readings are accurate, as this influences charging cycles and overall battery management. The charge efficiency is a ratio or percentage that represents the efficiency with which a battery is able to convert the received charge energy into stored energy. This efficiency can be affected by several factors including battery type, age, temperature, and the rate of charge. Setting the correct charge efficiency in VE configure helps the system more accurately predict the charging time and the state of charge both during and after charging. It's important to set this parameter based on the manufacturer's specifications or through empirical measurement if detailed specs are not available, as incorrect charge efficiency settings can lead to incorrect SOC readings, which might either overestimate or underestimate the true charge level of the battery. For lithium phosphate batteries, the charge efficiency is generally very high, often above 90%. 
This means that if you put 100 ampere hour of energy into the battery, more than 90 amps will be effectively stored. For example, the Blue Nova BP rack mount batteries have a charge efficiency of 96%. This means that they can fully recharge from 0 to 100% state of charge in just 2 hours, while storing 96% of the charge, thereby only losing up to 4% of the total energy input. The state of charge is a hidden setting in VE configure, which can only be accessed by right-clicking on the image of the battery and then selecting Change State of Charge. A pop-up will then appear, allowing you to enter the current state of charge of the battery as a percentage value. In order for the batteries to properly balance according to their voltage, it is important to set this lower than what you estimate your battery's current SOC to be. The reason for this is that if you set it above what the actual state of charge is, the internal Victron charger will prematurely stop charging before reaching the true 100% SOC, thereby virtually lowering the actual SOC of your battery. For example, if your batteries come out the box at 90% and you set this to 100%, they will think that they are at 100% state of charge, when in reality they can still charge another 10% to reach this. In other words, you will be limiting them on a software level, which you certainly don't want to. However, if you set this below the current estimated state of charge, the battery's built-in BMS will know when it reaches the true 100% state of charge. It will do this based on the battery voltage and not the false SOC value that you set in VE configure. Once it reaches this voltage, it will automatically stop charging. This secret trick makes sure that this internal BMS does not conflict and overrule the external BMS of your batteries. For example, should you install batteries out of the box that you estimate are at 90%, you should set this to a much lower SOC value, such as say 60 to 70%. By doing this, you will eliminate the possibility that the VE Configure BMS will conflict with your external BMS. This will allow the external BMS to charge the batteries freely until they reach their required voltage and their true 100% state of charge, at which point it will stop charging. Once it reaches 100%, it will automatically adjust the internal VE config BMS to also be 100%, thereby accurately balancing both readings. So there is no need to set this again in VE configure. It will be done automatically. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you've made it this far, I sincerely hope you have enjoyed the content and learned something new. If so, please leave a like and subscribe if you have, as well as to get notified of any future videos. Oh, and make sure to check out this video as well. You can also subscribe over here. And this one is pretty cool too. Lastly, don't forget to visit the Blue Power Pro Forum.